Greetings everyone, this is Tanya at Love Iodine. Welcome to another installment of my wild edible plant series. This week we're going to be focusing on wild clover. This is an edible wild food, wild medicinal, and it's also a favorite of honeybees. Before we get started, a little disclaimer, I'm not responsible for any injuries or illnesses that result from your actions. You are responsible to do your own research, most importantly use your common sense. It is imperative to always properly identify a plant before you even touch it, let alone consume it. Use this information along with quality field guides, other reliable sources, and or a knowledgeable forager to assist you. That being said, let's talk about wild clover. It's a very common plant. It's been naturalized, brought over here by um, somebody, came from Europe, so someone had to bring it. Uh, the genus is uh, Trifolium, so you might, we're going to see a couple different uh, varieties, probably in my backyard. There's some subspecies of this one. We're also going to see the red clover uh, whenever we go out there, as well as a look-alike, the yellowwood sorrel. All of them are edible, they're just used differently, so keep those things in mind. Learn each individual plant. This one's going to flower May through September. You might see it April through October, depending on where you are and depending on the year. Things change from year to year. Seasons are always changing. This one's commonly called Dutch clover in other areas, not where I live, but it's called Ladino clover or Ladino. This is in the pea family, uh, legumes, beans, we're familiar with those might have eaten some today if you uh, had some peas or something. Fabiaceae is the technical botanical name for that family. And what we have here on the left hand side, we got a bee having a little look into the flowers, collecting a little bit of that nectar, maybe going to make some honey. So it's a really nice one for that. This is not the only species of clover used to make honey and it's probably not even the preferred as far as taste for us, but it's definitely one that bees do like and it's very beneficial for them. We need to keep in mind not to spare yards. We can encourage things like that to come in, pay us a little bit of a visit, and keep you know our food sources going. A lot of our plants that we actually use for commercial, um, you know, for our dinner, like almonds and stuff, they need bees to pollinate them. So we need the bees to be able to survive. So watch that pesticide use. That said, we're gonna be talking here about the white clover and its edible and medicinal benefits. We're gonna see the size when we go outside. It's gonna make it a little bit easier. We're gonna see that this flower head's gonna be about a half inch, you know, size of a small marble, if you will, typically is what you're gonna see. Uh, the white clover is gonna be smaller than the red clover, much more low growing. The red clover is gonna be, you know, quite sizable to get up to, you know, a foot, 18 inches sometimes, uh, if it's in a good type of uh, soil that it likes. Whereas the white clover, typically four to 10 inches. The one in my yard is a rather low growing species, which is great because keep you know the need to mow down but it is uh, taking over little sections of my yard which I'm encouraging to do by mowing around it letting the flower heads go to seed and then letting them spread and take over a little bit and keeping the lawn looking good but still encouraging a, a free food source to be growing that is pesticide free as we see here on the right hand side we have the little leaves we have leaves of three now you might get lucky and see a four leaf clover five leaf six leaf Think they go pretty high up. Uh, I'm not the patient type, so I don't spend much time looking for four leaf clovers. A friend of mine is very good at it and actually is very lucky, has a good eye for it as far as that goes. And of course, you know, you might go out there and check some out yourself. Anyway, whenever we see these uh, clovers, the red clover and the white clover, but this time we're going to be talking about the white clover. We're going to see these markings, the V-shape. They're going to be more pronounced when we look at the red clover. And we're going to see it sometimes a little pink in these flowers. Don't be surprised um, if you see some. And there's different varieties of clover. So some are, you know, whitish pink, pinkish. Then, of course, you have the pinkish red. You know, they, they look purple, but they call them red clovers. But again, this is the specific one here. And how would we use this? Flower heads can be used. That's very um, often for medicinal purposes. But you can use the whole plant for edibility. Of course, palatability is a whole different story and it needs to be processed. We're dealing with perennials here, so it means they're gonna come back year after year and of course spread by seed as well as keep coming back up. What we know about the clovers and other plants that are in the pea family, they're gonna be high in protein. And this one's very fortunate because it's very abundant. So in times of need, this could you know, provide a sizable amount of food for a little while. It's not easy for us to digest because we are not cows and we do not have a multi-chamber stomach, but we can overcome that by steaming or gently boiling for five to 10 minutes. We can also, in combination or singly, we can soak in salt water, a tablespoon of good quality salt per quart of filtered water, and do that for several hours. That'll help break down the undigestible 
uh, things and make them more digestible. A lot of foods need to be processed to make them more digestible, but that's a topic for another day. So how we want to eat the leaves, we want to collect those before they're flowering because we want the best flavor. Oftentimes when plants flower or they go to seed, the roots and the leaves are not going to be as palatable. They're going to be tougher, more bitter, depending on the species. You know, dandelions, if you know, you want to get those leaves before they flower, else the leaves are going to be bitter. These are just going to be tougher, kind of blander, not as good, and not as delicious. But they just make a good pot herb. You can add them to soup and stews as well. And you can also dry those flower heads in seed pods, and you can grind them into a nutritious flower extender. Oftentimes we'll refer to things as, a, you know, a flower replacement. And there's no gluten. There's not going to bind together. But, you know, like this one ground up can be a flower extender. You know, cattail pollen, add that. It's going to extend it. Add some extra nutrition and, you know, keep your stockpiles and your pantry items going a little bit further. Now, medicinally, they have smoked this as an herbal alternative to tobacco. There's no nicotine in this. And this is, you know, something that people would do for that. Uh, red clover is also one. Red clover is more estrogenic. White clover is less so. So keep in mind those uh, chemical properties of these plants when thinking about how you want to consume them and if you want to consume them. The flowers, they are very good for coughs, colds, and flus. And how you can use that is to do a gentle infusion. We're going to talk about how to make a nice gentle uh, infusion or an herbal tea out of clovers in a moment. And you can do an extract, you know, maybe an alcohol extract is called a tincture. That would be one way. You can also make an extract using vinegar. That would be another uh, thing that you can do as far as making extracts out of your herbs. And this one's especially good if you have the cough, cold, or the flu, especially if accompanied by a fever. It's been used historically for rheumatism and gout. It has been shown to have cancer preventative properties and antioxidant properties. Great thing about white clover, it has been proven to actually be a um, very effective antiparasitic agent against intestinal worms. So we know those are our helmets and things like that. If anyone knows me, you know I had a very serious parasitic infection a few years ago. I had tapeworms, flukes, the whole nine yards. And it was very difficult to overcome. If we can keep those down and keep the, the uh, number down, it could definitely help with that. So this is one that we can you know maybe incorporate into our diet as a part of a parasite cleanse. Check out my website if you want more information on that or leave a comment down below, ask a question. Definitely open to talk about my experience. And again, we have that low content of phytoestrogens. A very beautiful little plant here and how we can make a white clover tea. This is gonna seem it's gonna hold true for red clover as well. So don't be too restrictive in that. Of course, different properties. Red clover is very cleansing as, as well. You have skin issues. It's been proven herbally to help with detoxification and blood purification. So what we can do if we're making a white clover tea, maybe we have a little bit of a cold, a little bit of a cough, need a little bit of a extra assistance, or if we were doing a parasite cleanse, it might be a good option. I might incorporate that in next time. We're gonna add one to two teaspoons of dried flower heads or three fresh flower heads to eight ounces of hot, not boiling water. Again, when we're dealing with flowers, we don't want to boil that water. We wanna go gentle. We're dealing with roots and, you know, barks and stems. You might think, barks, what are we talking about? You eat barks all day, every day, probably if you eat cinnamon, that's from the bark of a tree. And so it's just, you know, we have to wrap our minds around that most of our things that we get actually come from somewhere, right? Now we cover and steam it for about 30 minutes. Very important to cover these because any of the volatile oils, they would, they're very delicate. They're going to evaporate off into the steam. We don't want that, we want to capture them. And we can enjoy drinking up to two to three cups daily as needed. So whatever you would, you know, I wouldn't do it every day. I don't do anything every day. Uh, I don't eat the same food every day. So it's how your body and what it needs. Anyway, let us go take a look at my ebook. Then we're going to go outside in my backyard and we're going to see some white clovers and we're going to see a red clover for comparison, as well as the lookalike, the yellow woods rail. Keep in mind, white clovers and all clovers, none of them have heart-shaped leaves, even though this picture, this little clip art kind of is trying to show us that it does, but they always confuse it with the woods rail. And there you have more rounded, just like this clip art down in the lower part does. So just keep those things in mind when you're out and about. All right, let's go look at the ebook. All right, now we're at the ebook I wrote and white clover is actually part of ebook there's 20 something other plants as part of it i 
started writing this a few years ago when I lived outside Washington, D.C. and just opened up a Word document and ended up with a two dozen plants, two pages each, and a little glossary and some other information that might help you if you're interested. Uh, do let me know if you're interested in getting a copy of it. It is available for download. Keep in mind uh, this one, as in all, uh, be careful when you're consuming or handling any plants that are new to you and definitely read uh, the disclaimer. Anyway, white clovers, as stated, are native to Europe. They are widely introduced in the United States. We've stated it's a voracious, low-growing perennial plant. It's found in yards, typically four to 10 inches. The one thing in this part that I hadn't mentioned the other one is the roots are edible in a survival situation. Keep in mind, if you do take the roots out, the plant is not going to continue. So we only want to do that in the last resort. We don't want to go out there and kill the plants. And you can definitely check this out. This gives all the information on how to make the tea as well. And I'm also going to eventually uh, be putting up the individual you know, PDFs of each of the plants, like the slides. That way they will be available for download um, by the plant that people are interested in. Maybe you'd be one of them. So just keep uh, on the lookout for that. I'll definitely make an announcement when that occurs a little short on time. And, you know, that does take uh, time. But hopefully by midsummer, once I get a couple of these videos out, half dozen, get those up and running and get those out there for people to start exploring out into nature and maybe getting a great appreciation for it. Anyway, um, out here in this lower corner, these are obviously not white clovers, but they are what people might get confused if they don't see them flowering. We have a yellow flowering uh, plant here. It's called the Black Medic, it's medicinal. And then we have a lookalike that also looks very similar, is another yellow um, flower that looks very similar to a type of clover. They call this a hot clover, and it is a clover. And you know, in the pea family and all of that, it's a trifolium. Very, very beautiful um, as well. And what's interesting about the hop clover, there's quite a few varieties of it, and they range in different sizes. But when these flower heads, um, you know, go to seed, they will get shiny. And as you can even see, the, the yellow flowers are rather, really shiny compared to the black medic, which are much uh, duller, a matte finish, if you will. And these, the flower, the seed pods actually look like hops, very shiny and brown and quite beautiful. And what's interesting about the black medic is they have this interesting spiral formation. So it's like, like again, um, I like seeing that, very interesting and quite unique. And these are just some additional um, pictures. Actually, probably most of these were used in the slide presentation that you just saw, and of course this illustration, but this is just an example of what is an ebook. And, and anyway, I hope you like that. Let's get outside and check out this plant in the wild, wild meaning of my backyard, which isn't very wild at all. Anyway, all right, thanks. Now we're in my backyard. It's mid-June of 2022, and this is a nice patch of white clover. I've been mowing around little sections here of my yard to encourage the white clover to grow. It's a very low growing plant. We see a few grass blades coming up, but all in all, still pretty low, manageable. The lawn police won't be coming. You know, to cite me for not mowing my lawn. Anyway, I'm going to try to get it to be all just as low growing here and that would be really awesome because it's going to have a good food source in case of need. Also, medicine, as stated, my yard is not sprayed in six years since I've lived here. So, and look what we have here. We got bees, they're going to town. So we got three bees in this, this little patch and this is where we know that they're getting a nice, safe source of you know, nectar and pollen and things that they can collect. So we gotta do the best we can to try to help out all the animals and the best that, you know, we can as humans. We don't wanna be destroying the environment. That said, what we have here is some close-ups of the flower heads of the white clover. And then we're gonna do a close-up of the leaves here. Again, we are gonna expect to see these little white markings. Now you could, if you're lucky and patient, I'm sure there's probably a four leaf clover hiding here somewhere. Not that patient to look for those. As you see here, we have some of the seeds that are drying up, the flower heads going to seeds. This would be what we would want to collect for running into a flower extender. And there's a little ant crawling on me, distracting me a little bit. 
we can just see what this is. It's a nice cluster, so we can collect these leaves, and again, we can use these flower heads for tea, for coughs, colds, especially if accompanied by fever. Very nice, mild tea, make a tisane, rather would be the proper term. And of course, we have some dandelions growing in here. Everything in my yard is, I keep all the poisonous things out. We're just gonna just walk two steps over here to see some black medic. We've got these yellow clover-like flowers. It is clover, so that is why we would have those. And we have very little sets of three leaves there. Expecting to see, you might see this growing. This is medicinal, pretty interesting. It looks more like the hot clover has yellow uh, flowers as well. Hot clover is growing a little bit on the other side, not in my yard, so we can't get that. Just checked out the picture on that. Now we're just gonna walk a few more feet to see the yellow it's around. So this is the yellow woods row. We have these leaves of three. I actually just pull one and then I'm going to eat it. It's delicious. These would typically, it's a little hot out so it doesn't, it kind of folds up on itself. So we see those heart-shaped leaves there, sets of three. This is a nice little trail side nibble. Oftentimes you'll see little clip arts of clovers showing these. It's a completely different plant, but you know, they're trying. Again, I also want to mention on the white clover, which I don't think I did, it, the leaves have serrations, like very minor serrations, and there's a little bit of hair on them, but the stems are smooth. Whereas when we see the red clover, we're going to see a lot of hair on the stems, and we're going to see a lot more hair on the leaves as well. So the white clovers are, you know, more better, like if you're doing it in salt water, maybe do it lightly steamed. The squirrel just ran across the yard, distracting me. It's like, squirrel. All right, I just want to go back over here and just be careful not to step in the patch of the white clovers. Or I might step on a bee. So whenever we look at these, we can definitely see that there is some very, you know, um, very d d d d d serrations, very, very tight. We'll see more pronounced on the red clover. All right, let's get over and check that out. Now I'm sitting in my front yard. This is where I have some red clover growing. You can see how much higher this is compared to the white clover. And you can see how much hair there is on these stems, whereas the white clover, you're not going to see that. Flowers, same shape. These are bigger though, because just a bigger plant. This is red clover. I know it looks pink purple, but that is what we call it. Beautiful little flowers. These would be good for a tea right here as it is. I'm gonna make sure there's no mold on these as well. Make sure there's no mold on anything. And notice how large these leaves are. Now the bugs had a little bite on them, but you know, that's okay. They have to eat too. Definitely check how big the leaves are. You can see those really fine hairs on these, much more pronounced. You can definitely see the markings, the Vs, easier on these as well. You definitely see them on the white ones as well, but sometimes it's just a little more subdued but these you can definitely see from a distance. Anyway, just wanted to show the difference between those plants. We have some other friends growing over here. This is mallow. You can eat this one as well. It's a non-native, it's been brought in. Anyway, I hope that helped with the identification of the white clover and showing some of the difference between the red clover, another yummy edible as well. The tea is delicious, very healthy, I like it. And we have our mallow, that's not a clover, but it is a good one anyway. And we have our black medic, and you saw the yellow with Sorrel. All right, peace and love, everybody. Please leave a comment, like, subscribe, do all that jazz. Um, have a really great one. Happy Friday. Take care.